Today I'm just using a wall, right? As I'm doing this, once I get a feeling on my palm and it feels okay, again, please go slow at first. See if you can feel your elbow now. So the force goes into my elbow. Once you can do that, slowly go into your shoulder. Down your ribs. Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report. Today we're going to do one of the more important techniques in Wing Chun, uh, Pak Sao. So Chris, can you come in? Pak in Chinese means to slap and Sao means hand. The name is actually really important because you want to slap and have a whipping energy, not a pushing energy. If you push on the guy's arm and he's big, you're going to end up taking rebound force. That means the guy can run you over. So to give you some example, there's too many, it's pretty much infinite, but Pak Sao can be used for defense or attack. So some example of defense is, well, first of all, Pak Sao is mainly used against a straight punch. If the guy's not punching straight like a jab or like a cross and he's going round, you don't use Pak Sao. So every tool has a limitation, right? So if Chris punches straight at me, it gives me an opportunity to work on Pak Sao. So you can go under the guy's arm. You can just go under and then use the Pak Sao to off balance him. You can go under the guy's arm go over the guy's arm, right? So that, that's some of the examples. Sometimes you can use it for an attack. You can use the common one you see a lot, right? You can use the half beat. You can use a double trap, right? All of them are pox of variation. And this goes on and on and on. And I'm only gonna show a little bit, right? But one of the most common mistake of the pox is, you see this all online a lot or in books, right? Or whatever, where people pushes down and hit. The problem with that is it opens up your center line actually opens up your whole face, right? So if a guy's trained with good reflex, like touching tactile reflex, and you do this to someone that's trained, that hand's coming right out of your face. So if I come in like this, bang, I'm gonna get hit, because I'm setting off the alarms, right? If he's trained even better than that, he'll use this hand to hit me, which is way closer and faster. Now I set up alarms again. So that's not a good thing to do. The reason why people do it is because it's reinforced. Every time they do it, they win. But the problem with that is they might run into someone that's actually good, not their training partner, like uh, someone that does a lot of push hands, someone that does a lot of chi sao, uh, Greco wrestler, BJJ guy, judo, any, any grappling or sticking art that works a lot of tactile sensitivity, people like that have sharp reflex. If you go around pushing their arm, it's a Christmas present to them, right? So you don't want to do that. So today, before I show you all the variations, all I'm going to do today is show you one important warm-up exercise for uh, pox out, okay? So we're gonna start the warm-up exercise. This is not an application, it's a warm-up exercise. So Chris is gonna give me, we're in a training stance, and he's giving me a punch, and I'm working on the pox out. The first thing that I wanna be aware of is my hand. Don't do this, don't get sloppy. Tuck in your thumb, tuck in your fingers so it doesn't break. Second of all is a point of contact. You wanna contact here, not with where you hit people with and not the fingers, right in the center of the palm. Next thing you want to work on is you're never going sideways. That opened up your head right away. You're not going sideways, you're going forward. Number four, you're never going down. That leaves your head open. So you're not, and number five, you're not going up. That will break your wrist. So you're not going up, you're not going down, you're not going sideways, you're tucking in your thumb, you're tucking in your finger. You're going straight. That sounds really simple but it's not when this punch is coming at your face, right? That's all I'm working on. Now Chris punches me harder and I tense up my arm. Punch harder, Chris, I'm gonna get knocked out of balance. That is why we're training in this stance, to put me in a weak position so I can test my structure. So, on purpose, we're in a weak stance. If I tense up my arm and Chris punches, it will look like this, I'll start getting... So what I wanna do is learn to catch the force into my elbow. That's what we learn in Silunda. So any force that comes in goes into the ground. So Chris punches hard, punch hard, Chris. You catch the force and stop. The force goes into your elbow. When you feel that, relax this muscle so it doesn't come into you. Then you catch the force and it goes into the ground. So you built a spring effect, right? So that is the next thing. And then the next thing is, now we're working on this hand. This hand is never here, 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 here. You protect your face, so put it right here. Some people put it here, that's okay, but don't drop it. Don't put your hands, leave your head open, right? So, when I'm doing this, to review again, my fingers are tucked in, I'm not going up, not going down, not going sideways, and if Chris punches hard, I'm gonna create a spring load and not get back. And then the last thing is, this hand is right by my face, right? And then the next thing is, 
look at the chest. Don't look at, don't have your eyes looking at the fist, it's too fast. That's about nine things to remember. I'll stop here, there's more. And now I'm gonna show you some solo drills. Okay. Okay, time for solo. So, find a corner, right? I may go, we talk about when we do packs out, we're going straight. See how I'm doing this? If you look down, you will see that is triangle. That's a triangle. That's why to use a corner is a very easy way to practice if you don't have a wooden dummy or a partner. So, I do the exact same thing as we were doing two-man drill. I get in the training stance, right? Please go slow. Don't hurt yourself. I've been getting emails where you guys are practicing and going, ow, right? You guys got to just relax when you're doing this. Just have fun, right? At first, you get in your training stance, there's a middle. I'm going to contact like this, just like a pox up. As I'm doing that, I want to imagine I'm touching with the middle of my palm. Don't hit it like a palm strike, like the last episode. We're not hitting people, we're blocking arms, right? Now, when you do that, because it's a wall, it's not moving, the force goes right back at you. You gotta hurt your joints. So, what we talked about, about relaxing this section of the arm and letting the force go out, is very important to create that spring effect. You gotta learn that spring effect really fast against a wall, guys. This doesn't care how you feel, it will send force right back at you, right? So, when I'm doing that, the same thing applies. This hand's right here. It's not left, right, up or down, it's protecting my face. I'm tucking in my fingers, I'm relaxing my arm, I'm looking at the chest, right? And I'm imagining punches is coming. As I do that, you're going to start feeling it in your lower back ribs. Because unlike a human, this thing doesn't move, the force is going to go in to your rib. When that happens, I want you to do this. When it goes into your hip, you're going to start feeling like that, or the back ribs, right? I want you to think about tucking in your tailbone a little bit. And now you see how I won't lose balance, because now the force goes straight into the ground. You're forming a line with your hip. That's one of the reasons why the Wing Chun stance is formed with a little bit of the hip forward, like in a lot of self and Chinese arts or Indonesian arts actually too. Um, and it's also the same reason why like when you see people Olympic lifts, they pump their hips, you generate a lot more force, right? So when you're doing this, if it generates more force this way, it means it can take more force this way, because physics. So you wanna get your hip up, that way the force goes into the ground. If you don't believe me, try to do it with your ass out, you would push yourself off right away. This is really important, right? So that's about nine things to remember we talk about. Now the next thing I want to show you is, when you start tucking in your hip and the force is going down into the ground, I want you to take your toe, just the big toe and the toe next to it, and grip the ground, right? And this is nothing new. Sprinters do it all the time, right? Volleyball players do it all the time. Just sports science, but Kung Fu also knew about this too. Just like a lot of martial arts. So when the force is going down, grip the floor with your toe, that would take the pressure off the center of the feet. You will notice, again, your stability just went up again. And that's all this warm-up exercise is trying to teach you. I'm just trying to teach you to be able to handle strong force, right? The reason for that is, if you can't even do a simple warm-up exercise, how are you going to do it against a punch, like an application? How are you going to do it against a kick? I mean, you wouldn't pox out against a kick, but an elbow. Like, you know, some of the things I showed in, in the beginning of the clip, I show you what to do with the pox cell um, as a defense and also as an attack. And there's unlimited applications to this, right? Like a lot of combinations. You can't do any of that if you can't even do a warm-up exercise to teach you structure. That's what I'm trying to say, right? It's like you're learning how to play music. You gotta first learn the notes before you can play a song, right? So don't skip foundation work. You can only learn as fast as your foundation. And it's about momentum. It takes a long time to build a strong foundation, but once that's built, you start learning really fast. It's like a snowball effect, right? So be patient, play with that, and uh, email Chris or me if you have any questions. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Kung Fu Report on the warm up exercise of Pak Sao. Due to time limit, I didn't have a chance to go any deeper into the Pak Sao of how to use it as a trap, a half beat trap, a counter trap, as a counter punching method, and it goes on and on. But you guys have been messaging me about when the new Wing Chun program that I keep on talking about is going to be released. Um, I'm just a dumb Kung Fu guy. He's the magician here. He's the editor and all the computer stuff, right? So when is it going to be released, Chris? September. Halfway. September 15th. Okay. So you guys heard it from this guy. So that's when we're going to release a new program. It's going to be on the online academy and my website. Hope to see you guys there.